the 2025 Virginia political races have begun now officially. Uh, Chris Graham, Augusta Free Press. The news today that Abigail Spanberger, the Democratic Congresswoman from the 7th District, which stretches from the D.C. suburbs uh, over to the Richmond suburbs and then across to the Blue Ridge Mountains through Greene County, uh, she's going to be running for the Democratic Party nomination in 2025. Um, I think I'd said on a podcast last week that I expected that there would be some announcements of this nature coming up uh, now that the 2023, the midterm cycle for Virginia, which has odd year uh, state elections, uh, was over. Uh, and, you know, it's <laughs> here it is. It's Monday and we're already talking. Um, and uh, so she's the first in the race. We know there will be others. Uh, LeVar Stoney, the Richmond mayor, has uh, signaled uh, his interest in running um, and likely to announce, according to a report in Politico, from last week, uh, later this year. So we, uh, that's a month and a half away, six weeks, uh, sometime in the next six weeks, I imagine before Christmas, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it before that. So, uh, so that could be the democratic race. And I, I, you know, I've not heard of any other names uh, Two two women who ran in 2021 against Terry McAuliffe and came up short in that democratic uh, gubernatorial race that year. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Carol Foy, uh, Jennifer Carol Foy, and Jennifer McClellan, um, it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, them at least um, um, publicly considering running. Uh, Carol Foy uh, got our endorsement in 2021, and um, she uh, just was recently elected to the state Senate. And uh, Jennifer McClellan, who was a member of the state Senate when she was running in 2021 for the Democratic nomination, she has since been elected to Congress representing the 4th District. And so we'll see. Uh, but we know that Abigail Spanberger, who um, flipped that uh, that that um, 7th district seat in 2018, uh, she uh, that year upset Dave Bratt, who uh, a very uh, a far right conservative um, college professor who in 2014 had himself uh, flipped that. We're well, not flipped to see he, he flipped it within the party. Uh, he beat Eric Cantor, then the House Majority Leader, a massive upset for the party nomination and then of course went on to win that year in 2014 the the uh, general election in november uh, re re-elected in 2016 and then was upset by spanberger 2018 so spanberger's credentials would be that she's been able to win as a democrat three times now in a district that uh was uh you know solidly republican there for quite a while uh that that's definitely a feather in her cap politically and uh, Stoney, the Richmond mayor, is someone with long credentials in Democratic Party politics. JMU alum, uh, who was a governor's fellow uh, in the uh, Mark Warner administration. He served on the Creed Eads campaign uh, for governor in 2005 then. Uh, he worked in Virginia for Barack Obama in 2008. Uh, then, uh, I'm trying to think of what he did in 2009. Maybe oh, I'm sorry. 2009 was the Creed Eats campaign. 2005 wasn't Creed Eats. Um, getting my my uh, math and, and memories wrong there. But uh, 2013 then worked with Terry McAuliffe. That's actually where I first got to know uh, Stony. Um, and and then uh, after McAuliffe was uh, elected in 2013, then Stony, uh, who McAuliffe referred to as a top political advisor, one of his m m closest advisors. Ended up being Secretary of the Commonwealth uh, under um, McAuliffe before running for mayor of Richmond and winning that. And he's been in that job for several years since. So uh, Stoney with a long record in Virginia, Abigail Spanberger, that could be an interesting race between those two, uh, certainly. On the Republican side, we would expect then uh, no official word, but <laughs> it'd be surprised uh, if Winsome Earl Sears, who is the lieutenant governor, uh, and then Jason Meares, who is the attorney general, uh, both elected in 2021, along with Glenn Youngkin, uh, it would seem logical that those two would be angling to uh, be the party nominee in 2025. In Virginia, of course, uh, just in case you're new to Virginia politics, um, and Virginia has always done it this way, one-term governor. Uh, governors can't run for re-election. They can run a second time, but just not in consecutive for consecutive terms. We saw Terry McAuliffe attempt to be a two-time governor. Uh, he lost in 2021. Um, Mills Godwin back in the 70s was a two-time governor, and I think he's the only guy that we've had who was able to do that, to sit out the four years in between and then run and, and, and win again. Uh, so it's it definitely makes things tough. That's why Glenn Youngkin is not a candidate in 2025. Uh, Virginia Constitution prohibits that. 
So that's the news uh, as far as 2025 goes. In terms of uh, 2023 and 2024, 2025, those kind of things, um, there was a movement afoot, according to the Washington Post, and actually great reporting there uh, in the last couple of days, to uh, by House a group of House Republicans, uh, Virginia House of Delegates Republicans, to unseat Todd Gilbert as the party's uh, leader in the House. Gilbert had served as the Speaker of the House uh, the last two years after Republicans took control in 2021 uh, in the election cycle there. Gilbert from Shenandoah County, uh, just up the road from us here in Augusta County, um, a longtime guy uh, in, in top um, top positions in the House Republican Caucus. Uh, and actually, so there was reporting um, Saturday night into Sunday that there was the movement afoot by a group of three uh, according to the Post, uh, House Republican lawmakers who didn't identify themselves and weren't identified, or they didn't, they weren't identified. They were, I'm sure they, Post reporters knew they were. They just weren't identified in the story. Um, asked for anonymity, uh, but they were, they were uh, making it clear they were going to back someone against Gilbert as a protest uh, to the way Glenn Youngkin and his PAC, Spirit of Virginia, ran the uh, campaign. Uh, in the later later stages of 2023, specifically the 1.4 million dollar TV ad buy uh, promoting the 15 week abortion ban that Youngkin and his allies were were saying that they um, were going to support with Republican majorities if they were to get Republican majorities, which they didn't end up getting in the 2023 cycle. And so, even though you know, it's it's not like that's a secret, right? I mean, Republicans are going to push in that direction. There's only going to be a few. Who who would who would not publicly support um, a fifteen week ban and probably even less you know less weeks or no week ban, um, but uh, the the people who raised the issue within the Republican caucus said that they would have preferred to see that money spent uh, on um, kitchen table issues instead of inflaming the culture wars, and their frustration was that Yunkin didn't coordinate with. Uh, candidates in the House and Senate on the, on the Republican side, and thus Gilbert, uh, as a as a uh, you know party leader within the House Caucus, uh, he should have pushed back, and at that thus then that's why they were uh, this group was uh, working to to see if they could elect another uh, leader in this case House Minority Leader. Well, th they did find someone to run Terry Kilgore uh, from down in Southwest Virginia, a longtime House uh, member from from Southwest Virginia. There was no vote total reported, but we do know that Gilbert was able to defeat Kilgore for re-election uh, as House Republican leader, in this case, again, minority leader. And uh, and so the effort came up short, but um, consider it a message sent, I guess, that um, there, there certainly is unhappiness and discord within the House Republican caucus uh, over the way the elections ended up turning out. And that's not surprising. Uh, you know, there was a big push, certainly from from both parties, but on the Republican side, uh, you know, Republicans already held the House, so they lost the House. That that's that was a flip, uh, and you know, their efforts were focused on winning the Senate and seeing if they could have both uh, the House and the Senate, and then a Republican governor and have two years at least to really make some changes. Now, uh, Youngkin will have his last two years as a lame duck governor in Virginia, where you can't run for re-election. Uh, working uh, with a Democratic House, Democratic Senate, um, even with slim majorities of 51-49 in the House and 21-19 in the Senate, uh, that will still make it virtually impossible for Youngkin to get anything done without significant bipartisan compromise. So, um, so that's the that's the news there. Hey, if um, you have any questions for me, any story topics, I got a great suggestion earlier today from a reader uh, who um, – uh, volunteer, not volunteers, works at local polls, uh, I believe in Augusta County, the, the reader said, and she suggested that we look into writing a story about the difficulties that local electoral boards are having finding poll workers. Uh, and so um, certainly with 2024 upon us, 2025 already getting underway in Virginia, uh, that's a good story idea. So we're going to work on that. I've, I've, I've um, thrown that out to the staff and we're going to put some stuff together on that and find, see what we can find out. If you have other ideas like that, anything else, please email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.